About a year ago, I finished Ben Eater's 6502 computer project and got it to type characters on the LCD screen. And while it was cool learning how the whole system worked, uh, my ultimate goal was always to actually just have it hook up to a CRT monitor, just like Steve Wozniak's Apple One. And so that's what I started doing after I finished the breadboard version, was pretty much go down a deep rabbit hole of sort of how composite video and NTSC video worked um, and how I could possibly integrate it into my breadboard computer. I watched a bunch of videos and read a bunch of forums and articles online. And while they did help me understand the theory, I had a hard time trying to create the video board by myself from scratch. My initial idea was to have a keyboard that sends data to the versatile interface adapter through the port A and then output the data through port B. Um, and then that data would go to an AVR microcontroller like an Atmega 1244 or something like that. And then um, it would be processed and output into a CRT monitor or an LCD screen or something. Um, and while I did have a little bit of experience programming AVR chips, I couldn't really get the timing right. So after you know beating my head against the wall, trying to figure it out for a few months, I decided to just sort of you know, put it down and try to do something else with the computer instead. So what I did was uh, I tried to get serial IO working instead. Um, that way I could at least hook it up to my laptop and use that as a monitor. Uh, I found a blog that did just that and it only made a slight change to Ben Eater's original memory map. So I decided to go with this instead. Um, this required adding the 6551 asynchronous interface adapter chip to handle the serial IO it was surprisingly easy and ended up working on the first try. That caused me to revisit my approach to adding the CRT monitor. Instead of using the versatile interface adapter for the video, could I use the asynchronous interface adapter instead and output to a CRT monitor through the serial I.O.? It turns out that I could. But instead of trying to build my own video board this time, uh, I just tried to look for one online to integrate into my own design, just because I still wasn't super confident in my programming skills with AVR chips. Um, I ended up finding and using Grant Searle's video and keyboard interface, which I'll post a link to in the description. And after breadboarding everything and making sure that it worked, I used KiCad to lay out the PCB. Okay, so here is an unsoldered version of the PCB. Um, I think it turned out really well, but one thing I regret not doing is just adding the names of each of the ICs on the silk screen. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was it's pretty cool. Like I like the fact that it fits practically in my hand, unlike my 8-bit computer PCB, which was like giant. But yeah. Here's a final version of the PCB. And so you have the 6502 microprocessor, the ROM, the RAM. Uh, then you have the 6522 versatile interface adapter the 6551 asynchronous interface adapter, and then all the glue logic here on this NAND gate, which takes care of the address decoding. Um, then you have the LCD screen here, in case I want to use that. Um, and then all the video circuitry, which I got from Grand Thrill's website is here at the bottom. Um, I also added the header pins for the 6502 and the versatile interface adapter here on the right side, you know, just in case I wanted to connect this to any external circuitry or you know, connect it to an oscilloscope or something like that. Um, I have these header pins here just in case I want to connect the serial output to my laptop. Um, and then what I did was I also connect, I also added these, uh, this set of header pins here. And so the way this works is that the RX and the TX signals from the 6551 connect to the RX and the TX signals on this middle column here. And this basically is a decision making circuit for deciding whether you want to connect this to your CRT monitor versus your laptop. And so they, the way this works is that if you want to connect this to the CRT monitor, you will connect the RX signal in the middle, which comes from the 6551, to the TX signal on the left side. And then the TX signal in the middle to the RX signal on the right, on the left side. Um, and if you want to connect this to your laptop, you'll just connect both of these middle columns to the right side. And so this might be kind of confusing to explain. So let me get this hooked up and I'll show you what I mean. There's a few quick things I forgot to mention about this. 
Ben Eater originally had his computer running at one megahertz, but I'm actually using a 1.8432 megahertz clock just because that's what the data sheet for the 6551 called for. Um, when I swapped it out, it didn't actually affect the timing of any of the other components. So that was that was pretty good, pretty easy fix. Um, then Grand Sorrel's video card down here was running at 115,200 baud. And so to get this matched up with the highest baud rate that this 6551 could output, which is 19,200, I just went in there and quickly changed the code. Um, it was a pretty easy fix to do that. And yeah, so now everything matches up. All right, so what I want to do is connect this to my CRT monitor. So what I need to do is connect the RX and the TX signals in the middle to the R to the TX and the RX uh, pins on the left side. So what I'm going to do is use these header pins or header jumpers to do that. There you go. I'm going to get this powered up. And you can see that LCD lights up. And just to show you the potentiometer changing the contrast, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, that works. Okay, so now I'm going to connect it to the CRT using this cable. And I'm going to connect this, this PS2 keyboard here. All right. Now let me change the camera angle just so you can see the, the monitor. Okay, I got this old CRT monitor from eBay for about 50 bucks. Um, I could have used an LCD monitor, but I really wanted to have this to have a retro aesthetic to it. And so I just went with the CRT monitor. Um, Okay, so the computer's hooked up, and if I press the reset button here, um, what it says on the screen is, welcome to EWAS 1.1. So this is a version of Wasmon that I found on the Ben Eater subreddit. Um, right now, all the computer lets you do is just uh, take a look at what's in the, what's programmed in the ROM. So I can type in a range of addresses. Let's do 8,000 to... 9,000. Okay, so you can see it's just scrolling through all that, all those uh, memory addresses. Zero, 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 zero to 1,000. Um, and you can see that as well. Yeah, right now all I could do is read memory addresses. Eventually what I want to do is program it uh, with a basic assembler so I can, you know, program this computer with basic and hopefully get some games running. But yeah, that's that, that's just showing you that the CRT monitor works. Okay, so now let me try connecting it to my laptop. So what I'm gonna do is connect the RX and the TX pins in the middle to the TX and the RX uh, pins on the right side. All right, and then I'm gonna use this set of header pins that I have up here. I I laid these out to match up uh, with this FTDI to USB uh, serial adapter that I connect to my laptop. So let me go ahead and connect that. Okay, now that that's hooked up, I'm going to power this up. And let me change the camera angle again so you can see everything. 
Okay, so for the serial monitor, I'm using PuTTY. So let me go ahead and open up a serial connection here. For my FTDI to USB adapter, it's going to be on COM9. And it's running at 19,200 baud. So there you go. I'm typing directly from my laptop keyboard. I don't have to connect my PS2 keyboard this time. I'm going to now click the reset button on the 6502 computer. And let me just check to see that that's working. Sweet, all right. So yeah, you can still read um, memory addresses from the ROM using your laptop, using the serial connection to the laptop, just like uh, we did with the CRT monitor. Awesome. So the last thing I'm going to do is connect the header pins of the versatile interface adapter to the header pins of the LCD. And I currently have it connected in 8-bit mode, but if I wanted to, I could also connect it in 4-bit mode. That's actually the reason I broke out the header pins like this, just so I can use either one interchangeably. But let me go ahead and power this up. And adjust the contrast. So there you go.